activities these graduate qualifications. There are six departments in the Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science. The first one is Aquatic Resource Management, Capture Fisheries, Aquaculture, Marine Science, Oceanography, Fisheries Product Technology. The faculty provides numerous facilities to support all study and research activities, from student discussion spaces, library, and integrated laboratories. We provide aquaculture lab, biotechnology lab, chemistry lab, hatchery, and geographic information system lab. The excellence of Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science is proud to contribute in fisheries and marine field through artificial pet thrift in Panjang Island, Jepara. Provides information to the public of Semarang as a reference data for sea level rise on the coast with ROP calendar. In our faculty, we collaborate academic and experimental learning to give the best experience of learning. The faculty have 16 student activity unit divided into several fields like art, sport, religious club, research, student executive board, and student senate where students are allowed to become more involved on campus, increase leadership, social responsibility, and their personal development. One of the organization, Kesemat, received an achievement as the best ASEAN student organizations in 2016. Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science conducts activities in international scale, such as International Tropical Summer Course and International Conference on Tropical and Coastal Region Eco Development. International Tropical Summer Course is an event for international students from partner universities to learn about coastal ecological preservation and coastal biota in Semarang and Karimun Jawa Island. International Conference on Tropical and Coastal Region Eco Development is an annual international seminar event that aims to promote and disseminate research results. The Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science aspire to take a role in strengthening the marine and fisheries field in Indonesia through the application of knowledge from our graduates to achieve and bring positive impact to the society. Banyak ilmu dan pengalaman selama saya berkuliah di sini dan ilmu yang saya dapat sangat cocok dengan bidang yang saya jalani sekarang. Melalui pekerjaan seperti ini Saya mendapatkan kesempatan untuk berkunjung ke tempat yang bahkan tidak pernah saya bayangkan sebelumnya. Perikanan saat ini menjadi sektor yang dibutuhkan di dunia ini. Banyak negara pengekspor ikan, bukan hanya Indonesia. Kebutuhan untuk makan ikan di seluruh dunia pun selalu tinggi, terutama di negara maju. Saat ini saya bekerja di PT Freeport Indonesia, salah satu tambang terbesar yang ada di Indonesia. Posisi saya saat ini adalah sebagai senior manager, Di Departemen Lingkungan, saya bertanggung jawab terhadap semua aspek lingkungan yang ada di job site untuk memastikan PT Freeport Indonesia mematuhi semua peraturan perundangan yang berlaku di bidang lingkungan. Ilmu yang saya pelajari banyak saya gunakan karena salah satu aspek yang dilakukan oleh PT Freeport Indonesia adalah melakukan kegiatan pengelolaan dan pemantauan di ekosistem pesisir. Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science offering some programs including international and national programs and we challenge you to explore our fisheries and marine science resources. So, be proudly to welcome you to our Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science. Thank you.
Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much uh, for your attendance in our first international guest lectures on marine biodiversity series. Well, it's a pleasure for me and also an honor for me to be your uh, moderator for today. And I would like to welcome to everyone who already here. Uh, as we know that there, uh, there, is, uh, there are at least 100 participants who will join. And I do notice that it's not uh, 9 a.m. Uh, yet, but the participant already around uh, 30, almost 40. And we are really happy to welcome our uh, friends, my Achan as well, and also will be the speaker, you know, speaker for this morning, Dr. Jar uh, Jaria Sakayaroch. Good morning, Achan. Good morning, Mara. Good morning, How are everybody. You? Good morning. I'm, I'm good. Mm. Good morning. <laughs> How's in uh, Thailand about the situation huh? there? The 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 COVID nineteen is everything okay there, Achan? Oh, it's getting worse. <laughs> ah, really? It's worse in in especially in in central area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, for me, I live in the south, so not that bad. <laughs> Thanks God to know that in your area it's not that bad, yeah. And we are also really thankful because in Indonesia currently the situation is getting stable. Uh, so I do really hope that maybe next year we can uh, meet each other again after 2016 or 15. I forgot the, the first time that we met each other. Yeah, exactly. 2015. 15, yeah. At that time, Achancharya. Uh, came to our university in Semarang, and then Achancharya was uh, affiliated with uh, NSDA Biotech. And then Achan uh, taught me how to do uh, single spore isolation for fungus, for marine fungus. And I still really remember that. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much for the knowledge, Achan. And ladies and gentlemen, our dear uh, participants, and today Achancharya will also uh, teach us and share about. Uh, the diversity of marine fungi and their recent advanced taxonomy. But before that, I would like to welcome as well uh, the uh, Vice Dean of Faculty of Fisheries and Marine Science, Bapak Dr. Agus Trianto, and also uh, the PIC of our program, Professor Dia Permata Wijayanti. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this international guest lecture is part of uh, a competition that we won in our department, namely Liga PKM, that funded by the ministry. And we are lucky for got the fund, therefore we can uh, proceed several programs, include the international guest lectures. And for the first series for marine biodiversity, it's an honor for me and also my department to welcome Achan Charia Sakayaroch. Thank you very much, Achan. You're welcome and thank you very much too. And ladies and gentlemen, before we step to the uh, lecture, I would like to invite the uh, PIC of the Liga PKM in the Department of Marine Science, Faculty of Research and Marine Science to give an opening speech to Professor Dia Permata Wijayanti. Time and screen are yours. <laughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. I do hope that everybody here are health and healthy and uh, far from this uh, very difficult situation. And I'm really happy welcoming Dr. Daria Saka Yaroch. Uh, I don't know whether she remember me or not because. I also joined her uh, lecture maybe five years ago uh, when you visited our campus, uh, invited by uh, Prof. Professor Oki Kanarajasa, I think. And you and your colleagues from Biotech and maybe several university, I think. I forgot. Uh, there are several uh, lecturers at the time. And we learned about. Uh, the workshop on marine biotechnology and also how to do some uh, metagenomic works and how to culture uh, fungi and something like that. So that's 
my first time to have a experience, the real experience to isolate fungi from the mangrove uh, bark, I think. And it's very wonderful when I saw my fungi grow on a medium. So it is wonderful experience. So I really understand that everybody here joining this uh, lecture with a big expectation. And I believe that Dr. Jaria Sakarayot, uh, I'm sorry, Sakayarot, can uh, fulfill your expectation uh, this morning. And thank you very much again, because you give a big, uh, what we call it, gift to our country, because today is just one day before our Independence Day. Oh. So we are lucky that we have uh, this kind of lecture presented by yeah. big uh, name. So thank you, Pak Mada, for uh, arranging everything. And uh, Thank you very much also for everybody who joining the lectures. I do hope you can uh, get many things from uh, Dr. Jaria Sagayaroch because she is expert in many things regarding of uh, fungi and culturing and maybe many kind of biotechnology upon the fungi. So I think, uh, thank you very much once again and I return the screen to Pak Mada. Uh, may everybody enjoy the lecture. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oh, I'm sorry. I should welcoming uh, the vice dean for, for his time. <laughs> He's a very busy person. <laughs> he spent his time to uh, welcoming Dr. Saga Jaria Sagayarot. So thank you very much, Pak. Uh, Professor Agus Trianto, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't uh, recognize you first. So I return the screen to Pak Mada. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Dia Permata, for your very warm welcome to Dr. Jaria. And to open officially this international uh, guest lecture on Marine Biodiversity Series 1, I would like to invite our uh, vice dean, uh, who will give uh, an opening speech and also opening remarks for our uh, the morning's uh, meetings. So Dr. Agustrianto, time and screen are yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mada, and also Prof. Dia. Uh, this is uh, my great pleasure to, what is, to accept your, your order to open this meeting. Uh, okay, before that, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, and good morning, uh, everybody, uh, distinguished case, ladies and gentlemen, and especially to our uh, speaker, Dr. Jaria, and I also seem with uh, Dr. Dia, uh, with her, uh, Dr. Jaria, remember me or not? Yes, However, I met in Semarang yes. and also I went to uh, biotech. Uh, biotech Thailand yes. for what it's learn about the uh, fungi. Yeah. Yes, yes, I do remember okay. you. Yeah, but uh, no, no, I'm not a scientist anymore. Oh, <laughs> because uh, yeah, some somebody, including uh, Prof. Dia, pushed me to become a vice dean. So mostly for official work. I'm sorry for science. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Again, it is uh, my great honor uh, to welcoming to welcoming all of you guys, uh, speaker and also the participants to the uh, international uh, lecture. And what is I believe uh, by this program we can increase our collaboration and also share the knowledge, especially uh, to the students. And of course, uh, as the vice dean, I'm very proud so much to Mada that able to arrange this session and hopefully we can uh, have more collaboration with uh, Dr. Sakharov. If not a uh, mistake, you, you uh, work in the biotech, right? Dr. Scarlett, at the time? Yeah, at the time. But yeah, right sorry, now, I have uh, moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, congratulation. And also, uh, we apologize 
that uh, our dean, Professor Trivinarni, cannot attend and this meeting uh, and the session because at the same time we have several programs together. So if you come to my room, uh, I open three uh, what is Zoom. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, what is our situation uh, at the recent days. But however, I still thank to God because uh, yeah, by uh, was this condition we can even have more collaboration, have more communication without what is a uh, <clears throat> border by uh, geographical. So I can say hello to Dr. Tarot at this time. And also I can say hello to everybody who attend this meeting. So again, it's, a, it's our big opportunity. And uh, before I open uh, uh, this meeting, uh, I also emphasize that fungi recently is becoming more important, becoming more, uh, taking more pay attention to us because of their potential in the biotechnology. So I'm, 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 I'm happy uh, if I can follow uh, the uh, Dr. Jaria's uh, lecture, but of course on off on off because of, uh, another meeting. And finally, uh, Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, this uh, lecture can be done uh, well, and also Dr. Jaria can share her knowledge, her what is uh, her knowledge uh, to all the audience, and by uh, pray to God. Uh, I open uh, this uh, lecture. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, very much. thank you very much, uh, Bapak Dr. Agus Trianto, our Vice Dean of Faculty Officers in Marine Science. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like also want to welcome everyone who already joined the international seminar. I noticed several of our colleagues uh, from uh, Institute of Science of in, uh, in the Indonesian Institute of Science, and then several lecturers from other universities. Even I noticed there are several participants not from Indonesia. Well, thanks God. So LinkedIn really helpful, uh, Prof. Dia, to share, to disseminate <laughs> this information. Thank you very much for yes. everyone. And I would like also to say thank you for our uh, students. Uh, Achan, we, uh, we have several students who are working with Fanjai currently, uh, mm -hmm. include Jessica and also Fatma. Uh, they work with marine fungi, and I do believe these uh, lectures will be very uh, uh, precious for them, valuable for them. And also, I would like to in, uh, welcome to everyone who also come from uh, our alumni. One of them is uh, Mr. Handung, now Dr. Handung, because Dr. Handung already passed his PhD defense last week, if I'm not mistaken. And Dr. Handung also ever worked with that Achancharya in Thailand in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we start the uh, uh, guest lecture, I would like to introduce and give a, a short introduction to our speaker today, uh, Dr. Jaria Sakayaroj. So Dr. Jaria Sakayaroj uh, is an assistant professor yeah, in School of Science, Walailak University in Thailand. Uh, Achan Jaria, uh, she finished her... Um, uh, degree. He obtained her, her degree from Prince of Songkla uh, and then uh, she started her career as a researcher uh, in the Thailand uh, National, uh, sorry, Development Agency, National Science and Technology. Yeah, and then uh, she moved uh, to uh, biotech uh, and then currently Achanjaria working in School of Science, Walailak University. And uh, Achanjaria yeah, has, uh, has a research interest on marine and freshwater mycology, <laughs> diversity of endophytic fungi, fungal molecular systematics, and also mangrove pathology. Achanjaria has published uh, abundance of uh, publication. Yeah, until 2021, there are 99 papers published in the international journals. And most of them, of course, working on fungi, and I was uh, amazed by her words related to the new species and also 
uh, her collaborative uh, works in natural products from fungi. Without any further ado, I would like to uh, over this screen to Achan Jaria, to uh, Dr. Jaria Sakayaroj, and the screen are yours. Thank you very much, Mara. Uh, thank you, Professor Dia, Professor Agus. Nice to meet you all. And let me just share my screen. So I hope you see my PowerPoint. Yes, Acham, we can see it very clear. Uh, okay. So I am excited. I feel like I am back to see old friends, <laughs> you know, since um, 2015, 2016. Actually, I went to Chum Semarang three, ta three times. Uh, in uh, 2015, as Dr. Mada and Dr. Eko said, we also, Dr. Professor Dia, we had a workshop there um, in, in the faculty. I think it's about isolation of marine fungi and also metagenomic. And at that time I was in biotech and I already moved here, but I still work with marine fungi. And these are the pictures that I, I just, uh, I, I went back last night to see the, the, the photos and it's, it's remind my good memory. I, I like the environment. Uh, most of at that time, Mada also he he was a student, and many other people as well. Handu, um, also uh, Sakti, yeah, we had a great time doing the isolation of marine fungi. Okay, and also we went to um, Kiriman, Jawa. It it was very nice. It was very nice island. I, I don't like the, the thing that I really don't like is I, I felt very bad uh, seasick. That's all. It was terrible. <laughs> Other than that, I love it. <laughs> okay, so today, uh, my lecture, I hope because I am mostly a uh, kind of taxonomist, I am mycologist working with fungi, I am mainly taxonomist. So um, I would like to share, maybe some of my slide will be more or less the same as I talked in <laughs> last years, you know, and maybe some of my slide may be the same as the, the web, webinar that, that I talked already last month in, in, in uh, UNDIP as well, for UNDIP as well. So sorry about that if the slides are the same. But my purpose, my, my aim of my lecture today is to, to maybe give you a, a background, maybe for those students and young generation, young researchers who want to start working with fungi, working with marine fungi, okay? And of course, you cannot be working alone. Taxonomists are dying, you know? So, um, but we need to support taxonomists. And we, of course, we need to work with many people. We have to collaborate with um, chemists, marine ecologists, marine biologists, you know, in order to, to, to work as a team and uh, uh, do some research that have impact for our country, okay? Um, so, my that's my major aim for 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 the lecture today and uh let me just show you a bit uh since as dr mada said i and dr agus uh recognized that i was in biotech before but uh, i've moved to walaylak university my hometown if you know it's a long province name it's in the south is around 700 kilometers away from Malaysia, from Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so this is the map where I live, Nakhonsi Tamarat. So it is a university. I've just moved here for three years. And yeah, but we, we can still collaborate with UNDIP, you know, we are in the same <laughs> institutions, okay? 
we can always work together. So uh, without de any delay, um, my talk today will mainly describe a bit about the definition of marine fungi and also the recent classification of marine fungi. And I will mention a bit about their ecology mode of life and also give some recommendations on species delineation for those who are just working on marine fungi and also would like to, to um, describe new taxa. Okay, so I have gathered some of the recommendations for those um, work. And uh, actually for definition of marine fungi, there are so many arguments, so many definitions about marine fungi, but I have gathered the recent, the recent from the recent definition, they have mentioned uh, that uh, marine fungi are those that is, they should be recovered from marine environment repeatedly. Repeatedly, it means every time we go to the sea and then we, we isolate or we, we examine the fungi, we have to see them again and again. So um, for there are two definition to like two groups of fungi. The first group, marine obligate marine fungi, or we could say true marine fungi are those fungi that they are able to grow and or spirulate in the marine environment repeatedly. And another group, marine, we call marine derived fungi, or we could call the facultative marine fungi, uh, those fungi that they originate from fresh water or from terrestrial, but they are able to grow and spirulate in marine environment. And again, they should be recovered repeatedly. And some of them, they can also, we, we can call marine fungi for those that can form symbiotic relationships with other uh, organisms. And they are shown to adapt and evolve at the genetic level or be metabolized at in a marine environment as well, okay? And uh, where can we find marine fungi? Um, because most of you are in the faculty of uh, fishery and marine science, right? So you get familiar with um, marine environments, marine habitats. You can find marine fungi from everywhere from mangrove forest, from uh, sea, uh, from in the water, uh, sand beaches, rocky shore, seagrass bed, uh, nipple palm forest, and even in the sediment, in the soil, in the deep sea, you can find marine fungi everywhere. And uh, for the substrata, the substrata for marine fungi, um, mainly for mancricolous marine fungi. Mancricolous marine fungi are those that frequently found from uh, um, mangrove, from mangrove. They can be found from uh, mainly from cellulosic materials, just like from wood, driftwood, mangrove wood, fruit, um, seagrass, seaweed, uh, different kind of uh, wood <clears throat> plant in the sea, even in calcareous in in the shell on the the shell of the marine animal, and on sandy sandy grain sand grain you can find the marine fungi as well, especially those would we would call um, true marine fungi, <clears throat> and for the those marine derived fungi. The, the marine derived group, they can be obtained from every possible marine substrata, as I mentioned, from soil, from sediment, sand, seawater, and they also can associate with marine animals and marine plants. Mm -hmm. And this group, marine derived fungi, this group, they actually, they, this species, 
uh, they not belong to the obligate marine fungi, but these most of these are uh, mainly the hollow tolerant group or um, hollow tolerant, hollow osmo tolerant, sorry, osmo tolerant or hollow tolerance group. Uh, for example, those um, Penicillium, Aspergillus, Foma, Autonaria, Trichoderma, things like that. Okay, so we this group we call marine derived fungi. Um, okay, and how can they survive in the sea? How can these marine fungi survive in the sea? There are quite a few pathway, um, these fungi, they must adapt themselves. Uh, most of them have the, um, we could call high osmolarity glycerol pathway involved in responding the salinity, the kind of adapt, uh, control the osmolarity in the cell using this pathway, high osmolarity glycerol pathway. And also some of them under the, the soil stress, some of them can accumulate the polysaccharide called polios. These are the polysaccharide group called polios. And also they accumulate some of the free amino acids in the cell. And this allow to control the water in and out of the cell. And also, the marine fungi, they, they can change the ion transport or plasma membrane fluidity, fluidity that play an important role in controlling the high salt concentration. And they have special gene, uh, we call salt responsive genes, um, coding for protein hydrophobins. This group of protein help to uh, control the regulation of salt and water in and out of the cell. Okay, so these are the, the kind of um, uh, mechanisms for fungi to live, to be able to live or to, to survive in the sea. And uh, so what, what are the they doing in the sea? What are they doing in the marine environment? So there are three major modes of life for marine fungi. Uh, firstly, they are saprobic. They are saprobic. They are saprobic. Secondly, they can be as the pathogens or parasite. And also some of them are symbionts symbionts with other organisms. Let me just share you for the first mode of life. Um, this slide, maybe I could give the slide to Dr. Mada. Maybe is, it may be useful for students, okay? Um, so as the sapro, as you see that uh, in, in this picture, mainly the mancliculus fungi, the chytridiomycota, the oomycota. This group of fungi, they are mainly in the mangrove and they help to transform, to digest the detritus or the organic matters that uh, originated from plants, from algae or from animals. They help to digest into small um, dissolved organic matter. And then um, they help again to transform the dissolved organic matter to be the particulate organic matter, which is smaller. And then this can be a kind of energy or uh, can be a kind of food for other detritivores and also can support the energy flow in the carbon cycle in the mangrove ecosystem. 
So mainly as sap probes, marine fungi, they can be kind of um, help for nutrient cycling in the marine or especially in the mangrove ecosystem. Okay. And for second um, mode of life, they can be as the pathogen or parasite on mainly on plants and algae or even in marine animals. As you may know that parasitism is the relationship between species, the parasite that live on the host and causing some harm. Okay, so we call parasitism or uh, they can be like pathogen. And so many parasites, marine fungi can be parasite in macroalgae and also in some of the phytoplanktons. As you see in this picture, they can be um, the, the parasite of the diatoms, Navicularia, and these are the, the lower fungi. And uh, we call these fungi those uh, as the chytrids, chytrids, okay? And also, the filamentous fungi named Spatulospora antarctica, it looks like it, it, the structure, it looks very weird. Um, it, it is a rare, rare fungi. It is the main parasite on the red algae. This is called Spatulospora antarctica. Okay. And finally, the third. Um, mode of life of marine fungi in, uh, in, in marine environment, symbiotic association. They can live together with other species, with other organisms peacefully. You know, you know the rela these relationships is, if I can write down the, the, the symbol, is kind of, they both have the benefit right so it can be plus and plus so three associations that i would like to to share with you firstly endolithic fungi secondly endobiotes and mycorrhiza and thirdly mycophycobios have a look at endolithic fungi first if you some of you may have attended the webinar last month. Uh, I did talk about uh, fungi in corals, right? So fungi in corals, corals is marine animal and fungi can live together within corals, right? So we can call this association as endolithic endolithic fungi. Uh, the definition are that uh, the fungi that are capable of boring into solid inorganic substrates. So it means they can bore, they can live in the pore space, especially in the shell and skeletons of living animals. Uh, they can be very diverse, not just the Ascomycota, but uh, Basidiomycota, Mucoromycota, and Chytridiomycota are the major endolytic fungi. And uh, they both have benefit. But whenever the corals are weak, they get low immunity or get some stress, these fungi, these endolytic fungi, they can cause harm to the corals as well. They can cause the disease, especially uh, a fungus named Aspergillus cidovii. This fungus could be a major disease we call aspergillosis in corals as well. Okay, but normally, if the in normal condition, fungi and corals, they can live together peacefully. And uh, the second association uh, is called endobiotes and mycorrhiza. This is uh, a kind of symbiosis 
association between fungi and plants, in especially marine plants. Sometimes we can call endobiotes, somebody call endophyte, endophytic fungi, endophyte. It means fungi or any organism that can inhabit plant organ and they can live together. They help each other. The fungi can help to promote the growth of the plant and the plant could give the food to fungi. So this is called endobiotes. Some of them live the, just like the fungi, they can live in the root of the marine plant. We can call this association as mycorrhiza, mycorrhiza, okay? So there are so many, um, I would say high diversity of endobiotes or endophyte in marine plant. Uh, Jones in 2011, he had the opinion that maybe more than 6,000 species of endophytes, endophytic fungi, associated with marine plant. And uh, as you see in this picture, the fungi can emerge from the healthy, from the healthy segment of plant. And we did, uh, we, we did have the, the research studying endophytes from uh, sea grasses in Thailand, and we found plenty and many of them produce uh, novel metabolites a lot, okay? So this is uh, endobiotes and mycorrhiza. Another association, uh, which is still symbiotic, we call mycophycobios. It means, uh, phyco means algae, right? Uh, myco means fungi. So it is a symbiotic symbiotic association as the lichens. So in the marine environment, there, there is lichens as well. So it's the association between algae and fungi. And, and this group is rare and need to be studied more. There is no any sequence data available for, for the marine fungi associated with algae. Um, if they, they are frequently uh, on the like um, on the rock in a small crevices in the rock and just like in this photo uh, this species is called Verrucaria mora it is quite rare I never never seen this uh, lichens myself but I uh, my professor he, he gave me this this light and I think it would be useful. Maybe some of you would like to, to focus studying on some of this unique um, group. And you may find something interesting. And uh, how many fungi, how many fungi are there in marine environments? Um, it should be a lot. Many studies, they try to estimate number of marine fungi. And uh, to date, Jones et al. in 2019, they estimated maybe including uh, culturable and also unculturable fungi, uh, they estimated maybe over 10,000 species in this planet but, and maybe more. Um, to date, he listed in this paper, in this paper, it's very nice. I would like to show this paper because maybe, sorry about that, I am one of the author as well. So I think it is a recent paper listed um, number of marine fungi has been described, has been found in this world. There are seven phyla, Escomycota, Basidiomycota, Blastocladiomycota, Chytridiomycota, Mucoromycota, Ephelidiomycota, and Microsporidia has been listed, included the marine yeast, 
as well in this paper. So if uh, you are interested, you can find this paper online, okay? And uh, currently, around 1,900 species has been described from 769 genera and has been listed in this paper and also in this website because this paper describes about the recent marine fungal website. We have created um, this website in order to have the most recent data for higher classification, for recent publications, who are the curators, and the history of studying marine mycologies, including the fungal-like organisms as well. So I find this website is more or less up to date, and it may be useful for, for you who want to start working with marine fungi. And also it includes some of the websites here that might be useful for studying marine microorganisms, including not just um, fungi, but maybe other microorganisms as well. And uh, as you see, you, you will see that uh, in, in kingdom fungi, there are number of fungi in this world is a lot and many people they are trying to estimate number of fungi in this world and is maybe more than five millions that's the number that they are trying to to estimate and for marine fungal lineages there are quite a lot as well as you see in this phylogram in this phylogenetic tree uh, the area that I have highlighted are those major marine fungal lineages. For example, Lake Canoromycetes, Sodariomycetes, Dothidiomycetes, and most of them are the Escomycota. Some of them are Basidiomycota, those mushrooms. You know, but the marine mushroom, they are quite tiny, very small, okay? But they, they can adapt to, to be living in, in the marine environment as well. So what I would like to show you a little bit about the morphology of the major group of marine fungi, especially the, the, the true marine fungi, the, the obligate marine fungi, I would like to show you the picture and so that those who want to start working, start looking on the wood, they would have an, an idea what group they are. Uh, two major groups that I would like to mention here. The first group is called Sodariomycetes. Sodariomycetes. This group we can call like a unitonicate fungi. It means this group, they are the ascomycetes, ascomycota, okay? So they, they, they reproduce by um, ascospore and they have to, to have the ascus or the, the SI, right? So this picture is the ascus of Sodariomycetes. They have only single layer. They have very thin wall, very thin wall. Of, of the ascus, so we call unitonicate. Especially the family Halosferiaceae. This is the largest marine family in this class. And they have such a very unique morphology. On the wood, if you would see in this slide, you see the escomata. Um, escomata is the, the fruiting body of the fungi. You can see by your naked eyes, and some of them you can you have to look and through the, the stereo zoom microscope. Um, they are quite diverse, uh, but mostly they have peritigial escomata, long neck, long neck, and they have a structure called periphysis and have a parenchymatous tissue. And with a variety of color, some are black, brown, browns, and some are like pink, uh, sorry, yellow, 
orange to yellow. And uh, most of the time they have thin wall as cuts, as you see in this picture, very thin wall, only one layer. Most of them, especially in the family Halosferiaceae, most of them, as you can see, they have the s spore, and the s spores mostly have the teeth, or we can call appendages, appendage. You see, at the polar end or maybe in the middle, some of them have kind of uh, a tail, very long thread like unfurling um, appendage just like in this photo. And if we do the ultra, ultra structure, you see that uh, high diversity of morphology of appendages of this fungi. Um, Jones in 1995, he reported 11 types of appendages, 11 types of development of appendages. Uh, some have like thread like, some can be like uh, spread out on the substrate. These appendages are polysaccharide, is a very sticky, is a kind of mucus, very sticky. This would help for impaction, flotation, and attachment of the spore onto the substrate in the marine environment. So they can attach and then it help for them to liberate and uh, um, distribute to the marine environment easily. Just like in marine environment, they have like a um, tidal range. So this group of fungi, they have to survive. They have their own way to adapt and then to to disperse. So that's why they have this kind of appendages. Um, and this group of fungi, when we study the identification, using morphological feature alone is not enough. Um, we need to use the molecular work, the DNA, in order to clarify the classification. And Within this family, with different types of appendages, they are forming a clay together in the same family. Amazingly, they try to adapt into several species, but then finally, they come from the same common ancestor. These results come from the molecular phylogenetic analysis. So it's, it's quite interesting. And for, for the morphology itself, there's such a very diverse group, as you see in the, the photo. And another group, uh, just like to give you an example, you see the, this is called Luvothia group. They have very tiny, is like a thread-like filiform. Uh, Escuspore. And this is another group that we could create a new as a new order. And most of them, they all have similar morphology of Escuspore. Most of them have the filiform um, shape, thread like, it looks like a worm, right? But they are the Escuspore. Of, of the marine fungi, okay? And uh, this fungus named uh, Pidumispora resophorae has been found from mangrove. Uh, it looks, the, the spore looks similar, right? With the lindra, but be careful, they are in different uh, order. If we characterize using the morphology itself, Oh, we, we may think that they are uh, in the same group as, as Lindra, right? But they are not. They are associated with many genera that, that originate from terrestrial, which is in the order Xylarielis. Okay, 
So we need to use the, the molecular identification in order to clarify the plastic, plasticity, the diversity of morphology of marine fungi, okay? Uh, because this group, the marine fungi, they are, try, try, they are kind of trying to adapt themselves to be living in the marine environment. So that's why they have similar morphology, okay? Another group that I would like to give you an idea, this is a very big group comprised of more than 200 uh, species in, in marine environments as well, Dotidiomycetes. Dotidiomycetes is another group. We can call them um, bitonicate fungi or loculoascomycetes. They are the ascomycetes. They are different. The morphology are different from sordariomycetes. You see the ascus, they have two layers of the ascus wall, the outer and the inner layer. Okay, so that's why we call this group bitonicate fungi. And most of them can be found in the intertidal area, mainly in mangrove habitat, mainly in the mangrove habitat. Um, they have two layers of, of the ascus, so it helps the ejection of the spore out of the ascus, just like, um, you know, Jack in the Box, a, a toy, a toy that has a spring inside. And then we, when we open the lid, the, 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 doll, the doll will come out. Yeah, right away. yeah. Uh, it's just like uh, in, mostly in horror movie, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes we, when we, we cut the, the wood surface, it's come out. It's like horror movie as well. Uh, the spore come out just like in this picture. So this group, the, with the help of bitonicate fungi, it helped to eject the ascospore out of the ascus, out of the, the ascomata, right? So this is a unique character of this group, and they have quite a diversity of um, um, ascomata uh, characteristics. Uh, mainly, uh, they have color, mainly black or brown color, and they always use the, the plant structure to, to cover the, the, the escomata as well. So we need to, to cut them down, to, to, to trim, to use the razor blade in, us, in, in order to, to see the structure on the wood. For the ascus and ascospore morphology, this group, most of them, they have the sheath or mucilaginous sheath, the kind of mucus cover most of the spore because it helps for, yeah, help to protect, yeah, to protect um, the moisture of the cell and also help the fungi. Just like sometime in, in the mangrove during low tide, the wood or the fungi get dry, you know, so the teeth or the mucus could help to preserve the moisture, to preserve the cell a bit. And some of them, many of them have uh, uh, color, pigmentation, brown, uh, yellow, uh, more, more or less brown or black color, okay? So this group is Dotidiomycetes. Um, the last group I would like to show you example in this photo is uh, the mushroom, marine mushroom uh, in phylum Basidiomycota, mainly three um, classes has been identified in, in this phylum, total of around 96 species of marine basidiomycota. They are very tiny. The, the basidiomata or the fruiting body of the mushroom are very tiny. Uh, you we, we can see by our naked eyes, but uh, we need the stereo zoom microscope as well. And the spore itself, the basidiospores, they, most of them have the oil the oil globules inside in order to help rotation. And some of them have the appendages as well, very tiny and have the appendages as well. And uh, this, again, this is a kind of adaptation for marine fungi in marine environment. 
they have need to have appendages in order to help for flotation and attachment uh, in order to reproduce as much as possible. Okay. Um, anyway, so for morphology of Ascomycota and also Basidiomycota, as, as I mentioned earlier, there are high diversity of morphology. And some of them, may, you may get confusion, confusion as well uh, when you identify them. Uh, I would like you to bear in mind that the size, the pigmentation, and the shape of ascospore, the ascus, they are very variable. It depends on the environment where they live. So size, color, shape, may not be a good characters for delineation of species. Okay, so you have to be careful. Uh, you have to closely look at the morphology very closely, critically, when you identify them. Okay, uh, both Ascomycota and uh, Basidiomycota. And uh, this is just, we like to show you the world is distribution of marine fungi. They are everywhere in this world, uh, but uh, heavily, the, the intensive study were made in, mainly in um, Denmark, um, Thailand, yeah, Hong Kong, Brunei, Malaysia, Friday Harbor in America, and also in Sumatra, I have found many papers uh, from uh, Indonesia as well. So I think, I think if you want to start working with marine fungi in Semarang, maybe you have healthy mangroves, uh, healthy in marine environment to, to, to work on. So it's not that hard. So it's very easy. You have a very healthy resources. You can do very easy by go out. I'm sure uh, you are in this faculty. You always go out, right? And uh, just like to, I, I, I found this picture again, and I like it. Uh, we went to Kerman, uh, Jawa Island, and we collected some samples on the beach. On the beach, some of them they they went diving, but. I, I, I don't know how to drop, how to, even how to swim. So I did not join Handung at that time. So we collected samples uh, along the shore in the mangrove forest. And uh, it's very easy. You, you collect samples uh, in your, the plastic bag and then try to recognize uh, the fruiting bodies on the wood, just like in this photo. You can, maybe you can use the, the hand lens you can buy the hand lens and then it's 10 times magnification. Uh, and some of them are very big. You can see by your naked eyes and choose, you select some of those. And then uh, the equipments are not that fancy. I am very classic. <laughs> I am in the classic version, you know. You need just a little forceps and then a plate of egg plates and then you dissect them under stereo zoom microscope. I think uh, maybe the undergrad student may, may want to try this. You have a very minimal equipment you can start with. You know, I also have a lab at home. I have stereo zoom <laughs> and then I went to, to an example and then I do this at home. And then uh, you can do single spore isolation very easily. And then you just spread the spores onto the egg plate, but don't forget to add the antibiotics on, on your egg plates as well. Huh? So the, the media you can use like cornmeal egg would be, would be good uh, because it has minimal nutrient. If you use potato dextrose egg, you may get something else easily because it's quite enriched media. So you may try to put streptomycin and pen penicillin into your egg plate. And then um, you will see that the spores 
are germinating beautifully just like in this photo and then this is called single spore isolation you need to pick up single spore in order to get uh, the the colony in order to make sure that this is the fungi you are working with this is species a species b okay so single spore isolation is very crucial and so that's about the isolation of uh, obligate marine fungi how about those marine derived fungi you may want to study you may want to start working with chemists and they ask you to isolate fungi so uh, for example from plants or from uh, marine animals uh, coral sponges or those are a potential for a natural product okay so you may need to do a little bit of the surface sterilization using um 70 percent ethanol or even sterilized seawater uh, and then you can do direct plating, directly plating, uh, or may grind the materials, the samples a bit, and then do the tenfold serial dilutions, and then plating, plate them out, and then you have to look at the, the germination of uh, spore every day. And then you do the, you have to, to, to isolate fungi again and again until you get the pure culture Azinic cultures and for marine derived fungi, sometimes it's difficult to identify using morphological features as well, because you will get plenty of isolates and some of them may look very similar. And you have to use the morphology of the colony in order to characterize. Uh, kind of identify using the morphotype of the colony first and then later you can use the molecular identification later okay otherwise if you do this for every single strain you need a lot of money to do and is is you need a lot of time and labor intensive okay so that's the first part of my talk uh, about general introduction about uh, marine fungi, how to collect samples, how to identify them. And for this part, if you want to, I have a, a, a online, actually I have a book uh, identification key, but it's in Thai and, and I have it in the electronic version. Maybe I can give to Mada, uh, as a key, although it's in Thai, but you may follow the, the picture, the identification using the, the picture. I can give you the file to Mada, and then Mada can distribute for those who, who are interested in identifying fungi. Okay. So uh, the, next, uh, the next part is going to be. Um, sequence-based identification and recommendation for species delineation. Um, this slide I mentioned in last webinar already about um, identification of fungi. Mainly, you need the kind of uh, two approach. Somebody will use the DNA barcoding and then compare the sequence with the international standard database some of them they study more they identify they study um, identify fungi more using molecular phylogenetic approach so the procedure is even more uh, detailed so for those who want to start with dna meta barcoding most of the time, after genomic DNA extraction, they will do the PCR amplification using the ITS as the primary barcode marker. And then later on, if the ITS marker do not have real resolution or do not answer your question, you may need to have the protein, other protein coding gene sequence as the 
secondary barcode markers, okay? And then uh, you may need to compare your sequence with, um, you have to do multiple sequence alignment and then do the tree building method using different criterion. And uh, it will complete your identification, you know, building the tree. I mean, for my, this is my opinion, my personal view. Uh, when you want to describe or identify fungi, it's better to construct the phylogenetic tree in order to see the proper position, the proper evolutionary relationships in the phylogenetic tree, okay? And for the, just would like to mention a little bit, some of you may know already, uh, but it's quite maybe useful for students uh, for the species identification, as I mentioned, if you want to, to, to study preliminary, nuclear ribosomal DNA could be the potential marker for species identification. Um, ribosomal DNA is uh, in our cell, in euka mainly eukaryotic cell, and fungi also have plenty of copies of this gene. They are arranged in a kind of repeat unit. We call tandem repeats. It's comprised 18 S uh, or small subunit, uh, 5.8 S, 28 S, all right? And uh, different region have different uh, um, evolution, different rate of evolution. For 18 S, they are quite conserved, highly conserved. So it's useful for studying uh, relationships at the higher taxonomic level, just like in the phylum or class or order level. Whereas 28S is have the hypervariable region, especially the, we call D1 and D2 region, which is in the beginning of 28S is suitable to be studied along with the ITS region. ITS is around here. And uh, it's good to characterize at the species level. Uh, for those who study yeast, um, ITS region and also 28S in D1 and D2 region are the most appropriate um, region to study species delineation. So that's a nuclear ribosomal. But sometimes if the ITS region or nuclear ribosomal DNA gene did not uh, have the resolution well, so you need to, to sequence more gene. For example, RPB1, RPB1, RPB2 genes. This is a protein, protein gene. It's the gene in code for enzyme RNA polymerase 2. Uh, RPB1 encode for the large subunit and RPB2 encode for the small subunit. So this gene is frequently used for fungal identification as well, as well as other protein coding genes, tubulin. Tubulin is the major constituent of uh, microtubules and they comprise of a dimer, alpha and beta. So beta tubulin is the frequently used gene for delineation species in fungi. Um, translation elongation factor one, TEF1 alpha also is another gene. There's uh, many people, they, they are using this gene for uh, identification. And if you look at this website, aftol.org, uh, and also the website in this lower corner here, it might be useful because um, it's comprised the name of the primer specific for fungi in nuclear ribosomal DNA, in RPB1, RPB2, EF1 alpha, 
and also beta tubulin. So it might be useful for you if you want to see, you can visit this website. And for other secondary barcode markers, some people, uh, they use the MCM7 gene, mitochondrial gene, especially for basidomycetes, COX-1, COX-2, um, calmodulin gene, phosphoglycerate kinase, and uh, DNA topoisomerase 1. Okay, it depends, it depends, but uh, you have to use as many as possible in order, as many as possible gene in order to clarify if you want to describe new species. And uh, this is the list of database. When we have the sequence, we need to compare with the international databases, right? Um, not just only GenBank, not just only GenBank that uh, we, we can use, we can compare our sequence with other website, just like Barcode of Life database, database from CBS, from Netherlands. They have a large collection of ITS uh, for Aspergillus, Penicillium, Fusarium, and also other indoor fungi that you can do the comparison with within this website. Uh, Fusarium ID, this is the name of the database, especially the ITS and TEF uh, and other genes for uh, Fusarium. Um, QBank, QBank also very useful for those who study um, ceratocystis, uh, colidoticum, mainly are those uh, plant pathogen and also airborne fungi. Uh, ISHAM, um, Draco Key, for those who study hypocria and Dracoderma, Unite, Unite is, is quite useful database. Okay, you can follow this um, website. I can give you my slide, no, don't worry. And also other um, interesting database, mainly for taxonomy of fungi. For yeast, you can find the yeast trust database. Uh, for taxonomy of the yeast and also other marine fungi databases that you, you may find this um, helpful, okay? Um, and uh, I have, for those who want to uh, describe the new taxa or uh, established new species, these publications are quite useful. Uh, I have given, I have gathered uh, information and also have given this um, publication for uh, MADA already. And they have mentioned in a lot of views about um, mainly more morphological and also molecular identification. Uh, but I already summarized the recommendations from those papers for you. And I think these recommendations may be helpful for you to start with. Um, firstly, they said there is no rule how many genes, how many taxa should be analyzed and compared. There is no rule for that, but you have to do this as many genes as possible because when you do the application, the reviewers may ask, may ask they always ask how many, gene, how many genes you have done. And uh, every time you have to like combine you sequence several genes and then you combine your sequence and then analyze the phylogenetic tree, okay? 
And one thing that is very important when you describe new species, you have to have the reference sequence or kind of type species to compare with your strain. You have to do this every time, okay? And if you have your specimen, you have to sequence them. You have to like um, culture them and then sequence them, have more cultures, not just only one culture, not just only one strain, but you have to do multiple collections, okay? As a backup and uh, to confirm the identity of your fungi, whether they are really new, okay? And if you have a minimum budget or minimum uh, equipment, you may start a single gene first. You may start to see the preliminary precision of your fungi using the ITS first. And then later on, you can sampling more taxa and then do more gene, do more like we call multi-gene phylogeny. You can do more, okay? And uh, for practical purposes, the minimum of more than 1.5% nucleotide differences in ITS region may be indicative of a new species, okay? So this is a note from the papers that I have uh, gathered for you. And uh, also the combination, what I would like to address here is the combination of morphological feature. So uh, don't leave, don't forget the morphology, okay? Don't forget the morphological feature. You cannot dump them, use only molecular. It's not, may not be a good idea. Uh, molecular work is a kind of another tool to confirm the identity, to confirm the plasticity of the morphological features, okay? So you need to combine after you get the phylogenetic tree, you have to come back to see the morphological feature of your fungi, characterize, uh, look at them again closely. Is there any uh, thing in, in like they are incurrent, they are congruent with your phylogeny or not? Um, and uh, sometimes, some people, they, they are not describe new species, but they describe new combination. You know, it, in this lower uh, row here, new combinations means they want to revise something. They want to revise the name of certain species. They want to uh, replace the name. So we call this new combination. So you have to be very sure that um, why the species should not be classified in the farmer name. Okay, you, you have to have this, the proper reason, you have to have the proper evidences. Okay. And uh, this, so that's all about uh, major recommendations. Uh, you may need to go back and then read more of these papers and then uh, apply for your own work. And this is just example of the, the work that we have done and then we have described the new species from uh, mangrove wood. This is called Heli Helicascus mangrovii has been described in Moros feriesi in Pleosporales. The morphology itself are unique. And uh, when we do the phylogenetic, phylogenetic tree, they are quite unique as well. They are farming with the type species. And you see, we, we will do the sequencing, not just only one strain, but we do one or two, maybe three isolates, okay? This is a uh, Haley Cascas mangrove eye. We, we also found um, new species of the mushroom in the mangrove area. This group of mushrooms are interesting because they cause the disease in the, the mangrove trees 
in, in mainly in the south of Thailand. And we have found the new species. The morphology are very unique as well as the clade. You see the, the branching pattern of the tree. They are unique. They don't have any closely related species. And we have done with multiple genes. And then we are feeling like more confident to erect new species for that. And these are the new family of the Aquilas uh, species, Aquilas grandis, Pavas, Resophore, Mangrovis. And they are forming a unique clade until we have enough evidence and then we erect a new family for Aquilas. And this is Manglicola guatemalensis, also um, new, fam new, new order. <laughs> This is um, a rare fungus in Thailand. And also this one also, Halo Jewelis. This group is interesting because uh, they produce a lot of uh, natural compound, uh, novel metabolite. I did not do it myself, but uh, my colleague, they, they did the, the screening and they are a new uh, family as well as well as Lotosporaceae, this one. The spore is very big. Uh, you can see the spore and the, is coming out from the wood. This is very big and it's beautiful. And they could be a family, new family. And uh, this one also, Therisporelelis or no? or new order, it means new order, Therisporia lelis, okay? So you see that uh, the morphology and molecular phylogeny, they are congruent, but sometime in some certain gene, they are not congruent. So you have to, to put more evidence in order to confirm that your fungi are new, okay? And, uh, Maybe I would like to stop here. Uh, I would like to conclude here for my talk um, that um, you have to work as a taxonomy, uh, you have to work with other, right? But be because marine fungi nowadays, they, are, they have att attracted attention because of uh, it is a source of novel metabolite and you have to work with others, but as a taxonomy, identification and verification is crucial. You have to gather more data. You have to gather more data on not just morphological feature, but also molecular um, characters. Mainly, you need to use like polyphasic or integrative taxonomy in order to clarify the, your species, to identify your species. So polyphasic taxonomy is a combination of like um, phylogeny, genealogy, phenotype, and also reproductive biology. Gather all of this and then until you get more confident uh, uh, and then identify your fungi. And then nowadays um, with the, the tools of high throughput sequencing and next generation sequencing techniques is help a lot to characterize the marine fungal community uh, also with the help of omic technologies just like genomics um, proteomics metabolomics transcriptomics has boosted fungal research in this field a lot and mainly uh, to study the biodiversity physiology um, ecological role and especially uh, maybe for characterize the natural product uh, for novel drugs and things like that. Okay, so I hope my talk, uh, my lecture today will be helpful a bit for you, for your students. And, uh, uh, and I am very happy to answer your question if you have some. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Achanjaria. Wow, your lecture is very amazing. Do you know that most of the lecturers who attend this uh, general lecture, they texted me personally and asked your lecture, <laughs> your slide. <laughs> Since, oh, sure. Yeah, since I do believe uh, your your uh, lectures already encompasses one semester of mycology course. <laughs> well, sure, that sure. is a, I can, Yes, Achan? Yeah, I can I can give you my the, my slide. Thank you very much Achan and uh, dear participants uh, after this uh, general lecture finish, I will directly send you the slide and also uh, the uh, papers that Achancharya already sent me a couple of days ago about the new species because there are more than uh, uh, more uh, more more papers that already uh, sent to me to give you insight how to study about the marine fungi, especially the obligate one and uh, additional information. Achan, most of the uh, students here they also work with uh, marine fungi, but uh, we work with the marine derivative fungi. We never oh. isolated the marine obligate fungi. And I think this is a very great re reminder for me to start to work with the marine uh, obligate fungi. And I also noticed that one of my colleagues here, Achan, uh, Dr. Mutia, she's interested on uh, from Bogor Agricultural University. She is interested in working on uh, marine lic lichen. So I do believe, uh, Dr. Mutia, you can have collaboration with Achanjaria. In case you have questions, you can also uh, email Achanjaria in her email there. She is, yes. uh, Achanjaria is very welcome. <laughs> yes, sure. All yeah. the time. So yeah, everyone who, who want to have a collaboration with Achanjaria, just directly send an email to her. And I do believe Achan will directly reply your email as well. Well, Achan, there are several questions that already uh, written in the uh, chat group. And for mm -hmm. every participant who want to have a question or directly ask a question to Achan Jaria, you can raise your hand and then you can directly talk and give questions. So we have a direct discussion. Is there any one of you who want to directly ask Achan Jaria? Please raise your hand. Okay. We are still very shy. <laughs> Let's start with the uh, question from the chat box, Achan. Okay. So the first questions come from uh, Dr. Ali B. Yeah, Dr. Ali B is one of my colleagues uh, who graduated from UK, if I'm mistaken. He's working with uh, microbiology as well. Her question, uh, his question is, uh, in the case of neither primary gene marker nor protein code genes does not give us enough resolution to distinguish well, to distinguish two closely related fungal strains. Uh, okay. Shall we use whole genome based at classification to solve this issue? Do you have any papers that we can reverse to, Achan? Oh, whole genome. Yeah, you yeah. can always. If, if you have uh, plenty of uh, budget. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and nowadays, uh, genomics is. is is the trend of uh, we for the phylogeny they can do the g the whole genome mm -hmm. to construct the the tree yes of course my answer is yes of course you you can use it um, in for obligate marine fungi I I have seen maybe quite a few that ha they have the whole genome sequencing in the database. Mm -hmm. uh, so not, not just only identification. So they have the whole genome in order to characterize the gene, several genes for, for example, like um, novel metabolite um, genes and other protein coding genes. They have to study some other aspects as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course you, you can, you can, and I may, I will find some of the paper about whole, whole genome of marine fungi for you, and then maybe I pass on to Mada later. Thank you very much, Achan. And then the second questions come from still Dr. Ali D. Is there any requirement to sequence and deposit the whole genome? Uh, wait a minute. I mean, okay. 
Is there any requirement to sequence and deposit the whole genome in design, uh, designated database from the journal in order to publish novel fungal species? The case which become a second nature in publishing novel pro uh, prokaryotic exa. Yeah. Is there any requirement to sequence? Or oh. Dr. Alidi, could you directly ask and discuss with Ajanjari? I think it will right. be. Uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Alidi. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Mada, for the chance. And good morning, Dr. Jaria. Nice to Hi. know you. Hi. Hello. Uh, so actually, I'm not currently working with the fungal because I'm I'm most of my life working with the actinomycetes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it is very interesting as well because uh, I, actually I am working in Sumbawa Island, so it's near Bali. So that's why I'm looking forward to collaborate with uh, Dr. Mada as well in terms of marine because we have lots of a pristine mangrove Ooh, area wow. in here that is, is untouched. So yeah. there's a lot of things to explore, Mada. So if you would like to come and join. I love uh, to. <laughs> so, yeah. So actually, um, I was wondering because uh, working with the actinomycetes taxonomy, actually, especially with the streptomyces, which is fairly highly divergent genus. So 60 days rRNA, as well as uh, using multilocal sequence typing are not always uh, giving us sufficient resolution in distinguished uh, two closely related strains. And we do have the genome-based delineations uh, value. For example, we have to calculate the DNA-DNA hybridization value between two strains, as well as the average nucleotide identity. So we will have more or less a rough estimation in terms of statistics to, 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 to be sure that the strains are new based on the whole genome pictures. So <clears throat> that's why I really wanted to know, is there any a requirements uh, set from the journal publishers that required we need to sequence the whole genome of the fungal, in this case, uh, to be able to calculate uh, similar, similar values like a DNA hybridization values or average nucleotide identity for us to support the proposal of the novel fungal strain. So that's, that will be interesting to know whether or not uh, in the fungal taxonomy, we do have a similar cutoff value mm -hmm. like we do have in prokaryotic uh, taxonomy. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. For, for fungi. Actually, it depends on the journal, you know. Yeah. And as far as I know, as far as I read, there is no strict requirement that you need to do whole genome. It's just sometimes the reviewers just suggest, you know, they, they suggest to do it. But um, a paper, recent paper by M, A I M E, um, 2021, I, I have given to, to Mada already, hi, hi. Uh, about fung, fungi. They, she did not mentioned that the requirement of uh, doing the whole genome, but she need us to gather as many data, as many to sequence as many genes as much as possible, mm -hmm. as well as, as gather with the morphological character. Okay. Yeah. For the yeast, I guess, uh, because yeast is fungi also, um, they still require the biochemical uh, taste as well, right, Mada? Yes, yes, Achan. Yeah, those, uh, I, I think DNA, DNA hybridization is one of the character that you need to do as well, uh, right? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, to answer your question, as far as I know, there is not exactly, not really strictly requirement for that. But right. nowadays, if you have money, you have enough budget. <laughs> yes. You can do it, it, it and you can maybe submit to high ranking journals would be right. best for you. Uh, 
one one other thing, if you don't, if you if I'm not uh, mistaken, is there any also requirements to see the difference in terms of the chemotype of the cell wall in in fungal taxonomy? Like we we knew that in in some bacteria and actinomycetes, we need to distinguish the chemotaxonomy of the of these strains. For example, the polymer, the isomer of the a amino acids presents on the cell wall and the menaquinone isomer. Is there any a similar characteristics that we need to identify in terms of a fungal taxonomy as well? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, oh. uh, we, we, we need to work closely with a chemist. Right. Uh, in, in order to just like we have an interesting group of fungi, we just send, send our fungi to them and then screen for the chemical compounds or I am not a chemist, but uh, what compounds are there in, in those fungi. And then we, we always incorporate uh, those uh, profile as one of the character for identification as well. So uh -huh. we also call this chemo taxonomy. Right. Uh, as well. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much for your answer. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Thank you very much, Achancharia, for the uh, answers. And then we we'll next to the other question, another question from Afi. Um, Ma'am Afi or Miss Afi uh, from Biotech Indonesia. Uh, in case of identi identifying fungi by mo molecular and morphological approach, Sometimes the results are unsynchronized. How to solve this kind of problem, Ajahn? <laughs> That's problem. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I have faced this problem too. <laughs> Sometimes we did just like we, we need to do the polyphasic uh, taxonomy mm -hmm. uh, as much as possible. And then we, 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 we gather all the data. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes we cannot do things much because we really rely on the database, the sequences from the, the databases. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes our fungi do not have something to compare with, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. the molecular data, so that's why it, it caused the, the molecular data look weird sometimes mm -hmm. and it's not in agreement. Yeah. with morphology huh, it's, it's difficult yeah it's headache um but as long as we have many evidences be brave you have to be very brave <laughs> try to find some your fungi must have something mm -hmm. you need if you can feel you know feel that your fungi must be new or something that must be unique so try to find some characters, some characters, a few characters, mm -hmm. maybe morphology, uh, biochemical properties or chemo taxonomy. Mm -hmm. Try to like uh, confirm because sometimes you cannot do, you cannot do much on your phylogeny, right? Because you have yeah. nothing to compare with. So try to find other characters and then um defend with your reviewer i mean be brave maybe try to find some characters and then <laughs> submit it <laughs> yeah yeah if you are sure you are confident your fungi is new thank you very much achan well uh that's kind of common problems in uh, my laboratory as well since so the students when they do dna extractions they you know achan they did not do the proper protocol so the sequence result sometimes is not good right mm -hmm. and then right. the price for this sequence is pretty expensive so uh, mm -hmm. we still use that bad uh, sequence uh, but for the publication they ask uh, me to resequence again therefore sometimes like just like what uh, mm -hmm. Miss Afi mentioned that uh, the molecular data and also the morphological characteristics sometimes not match but yeah, mm. uh, it will be very interesting if uh, we can uh, really isolate it, the unreported species. Because last time I, I also helped my colleague to work with the rumen fungi, 
r- ruminal fungi from the uh, cow a cattle uh, rumen yeah and then we isolated around five or six unique fungi uh, and then two of them uh, according to the uh, ITS sequence yeah it not related to it uh, to any gene the genera it only had uh, similar uh, they only had similarity uh, mm. around 70% but again mm. because of the sequence was not that really good so i'm not mm. really sure whether there's a new species or just because of the bad mm. sequence therefore yeah. currently we try to re uh, sequence the fungus yeah. again yeah because maybe we can find a new species we are not really sure uh, Achan, there is there is a, a question uh, from me anyway the, uh, related to the NCBI data. So for several times we tried to submit it, uh, our sequence to NCBI, especially our yeast. So uh, in several uh, when when we perform a blast analysis, uh, the uh, the genera of Candida, they will give kind of uh, what do we say in English? Uh, kurung, wait, <laughs> I'm not really sure. Kurung kurawa, what do we, so before the name uh, be, uh, my goodness, I <laughs> okay. I forgot the, the name. Inside the bracket, Pak Mata. Bracket, yes, there is a bracket uh, for the genus Candida, right, Achan? Oh. So uh, when we try to uh, make the phylogenetic uh, tree, uh, right. the genus Candida species zoliensis, it's, it's still one clade with the Candida without a bracket, but it's pretty uh, uh, far from another Candida with different species. So what is the meaning of the bracket in the taxonomy in NC by Aja? Do you ever I, face the kind I, of- I, I, I never, never seen how it looks like. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, that is something that we we are still trying to figure out in our lab because uh, our Candida zoeliensis, it has, when we did a uh, blast analysis, it refers to Candida uh, zoeliensis, but inside uh, the genus Candida written inside of the bracket. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's maybe kind of... Maybe only in the yeast, yeah? and it was seen in, in our the filamentous fungi. Mm. I will check it out for you later. Oh, okay, Achan, thank you very much. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we still have another 20 minutes. Is there any questions from the audience who wants to directly ask? Just raise your hand. We can have a direct discussion here. Anyone? Mada? Yes, can Achan? I just, just re re recall your, your lumen fungi? Your, uh -huh. Yes. Uh, uh, maybe you can. I am curious uh, from your blast search, um, mm -hmm. what group are there from the ITS sequence? I will check my sequence okay. now. And then, mm -hmm. if you find uh, the group, just like the order or maybe the first match, then you try to go back to different databases that mm -hmm. that the they are special because some some databases they they have. Um, the sequence deposited there only certain group, you know, mm -hmm. so they may have some sequence that you can try to compare because some of the sequence may not be submitted in GenBank that would, um, that may help you a bit. Hi, Achan. So uh, the genus is, I already written in the chat room, Sincephalastrum. Mm -hmm. Um, never. <laughs> yeah. Since so it's, uh, I I don't know what order. Yeah. So, uh, I I did the sequencing through NCBI and also I did sequencing. Uh, sorry, alignment. I uh, uh using NCBI and also alignment using uh Michael Bang, and it's always ah. refers to this gen uh, genus, but never ah. in the like more than okay. say uh, eighty percent. Maybe this group, not many people are working on it. So, uh, so there is not enough sequence in gen in the database to be compared mm -hmm. as well. 
Okay, so therefore I was, I'm really curious. Maybe we find something interesting <laughs> from from the ruminal uh, panja <laughs> because yeah, because yeah. there are a lot of resources here, but only few yeah. people working with the marine yeah, fungi yeah, or yeah. like ruminal fungi. Okay, yeah. thank you, Achan. Is I, Dr. Ma, Dr. Mada, can I ask you a question? I think it's very interesting, the result that you obtained from the rumen. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, so uh, when I'm just curious because the sequence similarity index was very low, right? Mm -hmm. It's 70%, as you said. So when, when you did the alignment, did you see the difference of your sequence mm -hmm. from your strain are actually in the hypervariable region in the ITS or? It could be in the, the regions that actually constant. So that was, I was really wondering too. Well, uh, mainly we, we work with ITS region, in ITS region. So mm. therefore, as uh, Achanjaria mentioned before, if do I really want to work with this fungus and really want to know the species, maybe this is new or not, uh, at least I need to, you know, sequence in another region, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is very interesting as well. Uh, but since this fungi is not belong to me, it's belong to another professor. So I just help uh, the professor to conduct the screening for the antimicrobial mm -hmm. and enzyme producing. But sure, I am really interested with this one. But currently, uh, Dr. Aldi and Achan, uh, my lab working with marine yeast, mm -hmm. <laughs> we we also found uh, several interesting yeah, Achan Acharya. I already mentioned to Achan Acharya, mm -hmm. we have a great uh, discussion related to the marine yeast and Achan already gave me a contact in um, NSTDA Biotech mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. about uh, our new, maybe new species mm -hmm. because it's related to the, uh, what would we say, rarely studied uh, general like Yamada Zima. And then we also found uh, W mice with very low similarity and then Hortea. So yeah, there are a lot of uh, isolates and strains in my lab, but we, we just lack of money to work with that. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah. Dr. Ali, if yeah. you if you have time, just come to Undip and, and we can have collaboration with Achanjari. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I'm sure. looking forward to see. <laughs> yeah, because I am actually now, as you, as you see, Lassa, I am a bit far from, from Java. <laughs> so, but when I got the chance to visit Java, I'll definitely put you on the list. Of course, thank yeah. you very much. It will be yeah. our pleasure to to welcome you, and of course to in to reinvite again Atanjaya <laughs> to to yeah. our departments. This COVID nineteen is it's, it's oh. really really bad. Yeah, I would like to go back to <laughs> yeah. I like the Baltic, you know. Ah, yeah. <laughs> we, will, we will prepare a mangrove batik for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you. And is there yeah. any other question from uh, the board? Oh, okay. Evan, uh, okay. Hello, Evan. You can ask a question to Achan Jaria. Yeah, thank you, Pak Mada. Uh, good morning, Dr. Jaria. Thank you so much for your amazing lecture. Uh, my name is Evan Frederick. I'm a student. And uh, of Dr. Mada Trendra Sibiru lab. Yeah, currently I'm working with him under his supervision, working with uh, marine fungi currently. Uh, uh, last year, uh, I worked with the diversity of marine yeast, like, just like uh, Pak Mada mentioned before. Uh, I helped him to isolate and uh, to conduct the analysis for my undergraduate thesis too. So uh, my, my question here uh, for this section is, uh, do you have any tips for me, especially who wants to pursue my master degree, how to isolate uh, the marine obligate fungi? Do you have any tips uh, for uh, sampling, for example, or for uh, isolating? Do you have any special tips for me to uh, isolate the marine obligate fungi? And, for another question, just in case, uh, if I want to be a taxonomist just like you, do you have any tips for me how to be a good taxonomist, especially in marine fungi? Thank you, Dr. Jaria. Thank you, Mr. Evan. So, Achan Jaria, Evan, Evan is uh, one of my students who contacted with uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Kevin Hyde. 
So uh, Evan tried to. Uh, Evan already got acceptance uh, from uh, from Professor Kevin Hai to join his laboratory in Chiang Rai, uh, oh, but okay. uh, certain conditions uh, make him uh, cannot continue. But he still has that fire to be a taxonomist. So mm -hmm. I I do really hope after uh, all conditions getting better, he can uh, pursue his dream to be a marine taxonomist exactly like you and. Mm -hmm. Professor Kevin Hyde. Okay, good for you. So you'll be studying your MSc, right? Your master? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, ah, yeah. hey, that's good. You will be in Mae Phan Luong University. <laughs> and uh, Professor Hyde is very good. He has a big team, uh, mainly taxonomists, right? Yes. So uh, for the tips, I just want to, to answer your question, maybe. I don't have that much tips, uh, but you know, you must love to look at, you must love microscope. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> because uh, my students, uh, many of my students, oh, they, they don't like to, to look the, to look and to use the microscope, you know? Mm -hmm. So as a taxonomist, we have to characterize small things you have to, to be good in looking things under microscope. And uh, you have to follow the recent um, papers, recent publications. And it would, would be good for you if you be in a big team in, in Mepha Luang University. They have a center of excellence there. And I'm sure they have a lot of materials for you to read and also you can practice more in the lab. I think practicing more in the lab, it would be very good for you, okay? And they have such a very nice facility. So I think no problem for you. You can be good there. Well, thank you so much Dr. Jaria for uh, your kind tips, <laughs> especially uh, I, I look forward to work here to, to uh, determine the fungal species for further analysis. But you know, for uh, unfortunately, the lack of facilities here, so I can't uh, perform further analysis. So uh, I just help Dr. Mada, especially for the marine not natural product from the fungi. Yeah, that's right, yes. right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, thank, thank you so much. Dr. Jaria, for your time, you're, you're, for, you're your, for your answer, yeah. for help. And, and we really hope, Achan, uh, because every year our university, the Konogor University, we have a research grant to, to, to conduct a research collaboration with international mm -hmm. researchers. And I love to uh, have uh, Achan Jaria to meet by collaborators uh, for next year so we can apply a research grant related to the Nanglicalus fungi, the diversity, and also the natural products. Uh, sure. Okay, uh, is there any other uh, questions, uh, Prof. Dia? Uh, uh, maybe uh, in next five minutes we can close the, <laughs> the meeting because there's not any, uh, any other question. Anyone? Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, Prof, is it okay for another five minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. Another. Achan, uh, this is uh, the last question from Sastra Chandra, another student of uh, uh, our department. Uh, her, his question is, I would like to know about your insight of same species fungi, but one species live in extreme environments and others live in general environment or common environment. Is it possible that the fungi have different DNA structure and could the environmental the environments drastically change its biosynthetic pathway? Thank you very much, Dr. Jaria. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yes, it is possible. Mm -hmm. um, one of the example is that uh, Aspergillus, mm -hmm. uh, a genus Aspergillus. There are thousands of um, species, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the same species. There, there is a, a, a there was a paper several years ago. Mm -hmm. The they studied um, aspergillus, the disease aspergillosis, 
cause the disease in um, corals. Mm. And they have found Aspergilla sidovii, that is the species name of this fungus, the DNA of sidovii that are in the disease, the lesion of the coral, the DNA of sidovii in the disease are different. They are the, the DNA part of the genome or part of the DNA are different from the CDOVI in the terrestrial. Mm -hmm. So this can prove, and also they can prove that the species CDOVI that cause aspergillus, they use the cock postulate, the, the theory that, that mm. reinfect the, the, yes. the, the corals again and, and prove that this species can cause the disease, right? Yeah. And they, 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 yeah, they, they found something different from terrestrial and uh, um, in marine. So it means these fungus, they, they have such ability to adapt, mm. to adapt themselves. They have such, I, I could say maybe kind of evolution as well. They, they, they have changed their genetic materials in order to adapt, to mm. live in the saline, in the hypersaline habitat. So yeah, it is it's possible. And there is a proof for aspergillosis, aspergillus sidobii. Okay. Thank you very much, Achan Charia. Yeah, because uh, we also, in my dissertation, Achan, I work with marine fungi and the natural products. And interestingly, still, I isolated the marine facultative fungi, Fusarium, Oxysporum. Uh, when we try to uh, compare the metabolites from the uh, fusarium from the terrestrial oxysporum and also fusarium oxysporum that I isolated from main sponges, even though we culture in the same uh, uh, medium, same condition, it produced different metabolites. Wow. So it means there's something different in their genes because wow. of the adaptation uh, uh, in the marine environment, and it's that. Therefore, I, I do really love to work with fungi. <laughs> That's good, <laughs> right? Yeah, different hosts, yes. <laughs> different hosts, different pro, uh, production, different metabolites. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ajanjaria, for your incredible lectures. Everyone in the room chat says thank you for your very incredible uh, lectures. Your today's lectures give the whole semester of my lectures of my course and we, <laughs> I do really love it and ladies and gentlemen dear participants uh, please do not forget to uh, fill yeah the uh, absent yeah so do not forget to uh, fill the uh, attendance list yeah for the participants and uh, uh, what is the function of that or the purpose of that uh, attendance list so we can get your email to uh, send the materials that already uh, explained by Ajanjaria. We also will share the slide, the papers, so you can use the materials to teach again <laughs> in your department, in your university. One more time, thank you very much, Ajanjaria. And to close this international guest lecture web series on marine biodiversity, I would like to invite Professor Dia Permata. To Professor Dia Permata, time and screen are yours. Thank you very much, Pak Mada, and thank you very, very much uh, to Dr. Charia for the very wonderful lecture today. So I learned a lot, especially I know nothing, almost nothing about uh, marine fungi, and maybe I should uh, change my subject to learn marine fungi <laughs> because there are so, not so many words studying marine fungi, but I need to learn from very beginning. So thank you very much also for uh, everyone to all participants. Uh, that already joined until the end of this lecture. Uh, hope everybody are got uh, some benefit from our lecture today and see you someday, somewhere, not maybe an, another time with another lecture because we still have many to share to everybody. And once again, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jaria. Uh, stay healthy and safe in Thailand and with your family and also for all participants. Thank you, Pak Mata. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, 
Yes, Prof. Dia Permata. Like I feel like I'm coming back home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Semarang is your hometown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I miss uh, Semarang. I, I I went to Indonesia three times, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, it was I, I like it. I like the food. I like people and uh, enjoy, especially nice to see old folks just like yeah. you. Miss, I really miss you all. And Achan, maybe after uh, after this COVID 19 finish, uh, we can visit uh, Doctor Al uh, Ali in uh, Ali di in uh, Sumbawa in another island, small island in the east part of Indonesia, right? Yeah, we're welcoming. Oh. We're looking forward to accepting all of you. Yeah. Terima kasih, Pak Ali Ji. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we close this international seminar, I would like to invite you to have a uh, group pictures. Could you turn on your camera and I would like to ask a favor uh, from uh, Miss uh, Nenny to take the pictures. Hello, Miss Nenny, are you here? Yes, hello, I'm here. Okay. Okay, please. Uh, I uh, yeah, please give. Uh, no, yeah, please give a hand to take a pictures. And for all participants, I invite you to turn on your camera. Okay, so please we can turn have, on your uh, camera. Yep. I will screenshot for the first screen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Second, Second screen. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, and for for the third screen. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you, Mas Mada. Is enough. Thank, thank you very you. much, uh, Miss Nenny, and thank you very much once more to Achanjaria. Well, here we we have Mas Handung as well, our alumni. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, Selamat Mas Handung. Where Hello. is he? Yeah, Where that's, that's Mas Handung. Maaf, saya izin ya Pak Mada. Yeah, saya siap, sudah kasih banyak. Nyon pangampun ten Mas Handung, maaf ya. Saya mau yeah, pindah. Yeah, Terima kasih banyak semua. Thank you very much, and see you in the next international webinar. Uh, well, of, of course, we we still have uh, discussion time here, yeah. But if you want, if if any one of you who have another things to do, you can leave. But for you who want to discuss and you know start a friendship with us, of course, we can have a great thought after this. Thank you very much, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hello. Yeah. Achan, thank you very much, Achan. Mas Andung. Thank you. Bye. I talk to you later, Mada. Okay, Achan. See ya. Okay, see you. Bye bye. Mas Andung, yeah. gimana Mas Andung? Gimana? Apanya? Akan ini akan menetap di Jepang dulu atau balik? Sementara mungkin menetap di sini. Bukan menetap sih. Sementara extend dulu di sini mungkin. Oke, okay. post dok berarti ya. Ya, 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 bukan postdoc sih tapi ya apa ya researcher gitulah. Suka bantuin, <laughs> bantuin nanti, ini per, anak. Sensei nanti acan, ah, acan lagi. Sensenya Mas Anung nanti bakal ngisi kelas kita juga nih Mas. Ya, ya. Ah, kemarin juga bilang katanya September ya. Iya, tanggal 15 Hmm. Jadi ya. Iya, ya, 15 nanti Insya Allah aku join lagi. Harus, 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 harus. Ini diriku sedang mengumpulkan orang-orang keren nih, Mas. Termasuk Mas Andung nih. Kalau sudah selesai nanti, Insya Allah balik ke ini ya, Limau Kelautan ya. Insya Allah kalau ada ini, ada <laughs> kesempatan Insya Allah. Wah ini, se- sekarang kan untuk udah PTNBH, jadi udah nggak ini, udah udah nggak via PNS. Jadi Undi memiliki hak untuk merekrut dosen-dosen gitu loh. Mas. Ini kan bentar lagi Limau hmm. Kelautan juga banyak yang pensiun, mm-hmm. so I will do my best to take you back to Undip. <laughs> Mas Handung, selamat yeah, Mas Handung. Oh, ada iya, ada Mbak Oktora loh. Ini anyway kita nggak apa-apa nih ngomong ngobrol di grup chat. Apa santai, ini sudah selesai kok. Ya karena juga harus balik ya.